Hello everybody, Gail here. I'm just going to show you my nearly finished quilt. I've been doing my binding. Um, I couldn't, I haven't got any cream quilting thread, so I've, I've dug out these two embroidery flosses, which aren't the same either, but you know, I don't think anyone's going to notice. And I'm just going, I've got to quilt along these white bits, just because I, I'm like that. I like to do lots of quilting around the edges. So I did my, um, did my binding in this lovely material which isn't anywhere on the quilt but I just love it so there it is on the front and that's what it looks like on the back the back of course is various creams and reds things that have been in the quilt things that haven't been in the quilt and I'm about three quarters of the way around the binding and then I've just got to do that extra bit of um, quilting and then that's done and it's very big. It's, uh, I think it's about 96 inches square. So, you know, I've about had enough of that. Um, so that's all I've got to do on that. Now my, my third item that I've got to finish, I've decided not to bother. Well, I've done some work on it and it's, um, it's very wavy. Oh, I was going to tell you about my waves, wasn't I? Let's get this quilt back. See if I can find one. Now, when I was um, sewing, here's one. When I was sewing this final bit, I could see that my outer borders were wavy, they were too big. So I'm gonna try harder, I've decided from now on, to not have to do this, but this is what I do. So I find a bit where it's wavy. And can you see that seam there? It's, um, it's here. No, it's not. It's here. There it is. There's up here. That is a fold. I get the wavy bit and I fold it like that and I pin it and I line up the colours and then I hand sew. And that little tuck makes it unwavy. And I've done that in several places. Probably. 10 places in all. There's another one. Sometimes, see how I've lined it up here with the actual seam in the red fabric where I've joined that. So that there is my fold that takes out the excess material. I know it's not conventional and it's just indicative of how slapdash I am. But I've decided I'm going to try harder. I'm going to try harder to not make it wavy because I don't measure, I ought to measure, so I'm going to try, I'm going to try to measure. Um, anyway, that's what I've been doing. I've got to finish that and then I'm starting on the quilt for the baby that's coming into the household. So in this bag down here, I have got lots of things, but they're not in any particular order, so I'll show you as, as they come. So I bought this from the D-Stash group, which is Shuria Fabrics, I think. Shuria, something like that. I'll put it in the comments anyway, the, the address of it. And um, they sell all sorts of fabrics, um, brocade and um, sequin, stretch fabrics, silk fabrics, cotton fabrics, obviously, jersey, all sorts of things. But they're all special. They have they spell special things. So this, this is what I got from him. This was, um, I think it was three meters for ten pound, and um, it's gorgeous, isn't it? I also bought this, and I think this was two meters for six pounds, something like that. And I bought them both because I thought they went well together, and I plan on making. Um, like a cardigan type jacket, a kimono sort of thing, you know, a loose unstructured jacket out of both of these fabrics combined. So what year are we now? 24? So probably in 2029 I'll <laughs> be able to show you that. But that's my plan. Now from Flutterby Fabrics I did buy a lot of things this week and um, I'll just see if I can show you. Um, 
they might be a bit mixed up yes i think that's i think that is uh from flutter buys this is over the past fortnight so they're all a bit combined thank you did you know that was coming oh uh well i am expecting some red fabric if that's what it is oh i don't know what looks no. honestly all right Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so from Plus to Buy Fabrics, um, I'll show you what I got last week. Last week she had on offer these um, bumbleberries. So I bought a whole ton of them because I love bumbleberries. They're my um, combination of plain and patterned. I like to use them. As you know, I don't like planes. But there you go. I got them, aren't they gorgeous? I got half a meter of each of those. So they'll go with my other bumbleberries <laughs> if I find them. I also got um, got this. This goes with my beetle fabric. If you remember the beetle fabric, I've got half a meter of that. Um, and I got two greens, just as you know, because I like green. And I am trying to uh, buy a few planes here and there. And I got this, I got this specifically to make a dress for my granddaughter. <laughs> so that can go in the dresses never made for my granddaughter pile. And I got this for my granddaughter as well. I thought that was really pretty. Well, it, it was nice anyway, it's got bumblebees on it, I like it. Um, and then this week, I went a bit crazy because I bought this just because I thought it's not a plane it's not really a pattern and I like the colour so I, I bought a yard of that a meter I bought all of this 10 meters of very very narrow rick rack um, really to decorate the dresses that I'm not going to make for my granddaughter so I got that that was uh, nice and then I had decided when she showed this panel, I decided I wasn't going to buy it. Um, I thought, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Anyway, I bought it. Let's see if I can. Uh, I won't be able to show you all at once because it's enormous. So I'll show you half at once or maybe a quarter. Is that the top? That's a top corner. Oh no, I think it's a bottom corner. And that's the other corner. Oh, that's the top, isn't it? They're upside down. Yeah. Right. So there we have. Uh, it's a C, under C thing, with a bit of sun, and then that carries on. This is the bottom part. So I think I've decided, though I don't know if I will, but I think I've decided I'm going to cut this up so that the actual panel is smaller and I'll take off the outside edges and incorporate them in. Anyway, I bought these fabrics to go with it. So these are planes and I think there's half a metre of each. So I bought these to go. I mean, she's very good because she, she gets these together and that's all I need is someone to show me the colours and I buy them. So that goes with the bottom half. And I bought these three half metres that go with the top half. So I don't know if I'm going to have it on my bed, but I'm going to enjoy making it and I might give it somebody. We'll see. But, you know, I didn't need to buy them, but I did, because I'm not very good at resisting. It is nice though, isn't it? Oh, I'm, you know, ages ago I told you I ordered some cat fabrics. They've, um, I wonder if that has, is that from? Let's open this parcel and see what's in it, because she said she, I don't know if she said she was going to post it today. Oh no, it is my red fabric. I got this from D-Stash. 
it's a Moda Radiant. Ooh, it's warm, it must have been in somebody's warm, it needs a good iron. Warm post van. Where's the thing? Right, so. I've got two metres and it, it, the gradient is across the width of the fabric. Now I've been looking out for something like this because I've got a pattern somewhere for autumn leaves and, um, and I wanted a gradient background for it. Oof. Folding up, wear your arms out. That needs it. it looks like it's been washed, so I never wash anything, but that's a bonus, I suppose. It won't run, so that needs an iron. Now, my the baby that is coming into the family needs me to get to grips with um, his quilt. So I got all my um, sheet fabric, which I'm not sure where I've put now. I did get it all together. Wonder where it is. I really do need to do some sorting out. <laughs> it's in here somewhere. Anyway, um, I bought this panel because I thought it would go really nice with it. So it's um, it's sheep. So I'm going to cut all them out border them with the other fabrics that I've got, sew them back together and that'll be the quilt done. I'm going to try to do it on my machine because then it'll be quicker and um, it'll go nice with my sheet fabric if I find it. It's probably underneath the quilt I just threw over there. Anyway, as soon as I've finished doing the binding on that quilt and that bit of um, sewing, that's what I'm doing. Um, from Sheila, I bought this. I bought two um, charm packs of Starry Sky. Now, you, you can't find this very much in, um, in England because apparently it all sold out in America when they had their eclipse. So it's, it's got star signs on it, it's all shades of blue and cream and um, moons and suns and eclipses, all that kind of thing. I've got two charm packs and half a yard of that fabric. So I've not decided what I'm going to do with it. Obviously I'm going to make a quilt of some sort, but not decided yet what to do. I'm busy thinking about how to piece together what pattern to use for my Christmas quilt because I'm going to do that after I've done this baby quilt and also from Sheila oh I think I've found my sheet fabric yes I have it's here it wasn't in here at all it was in my bag which was in the living room ah, let's go back go back to the sheet fabric so here's the sheet panels and this is the fabric that I bought for making the quilt. I thought it was a bit, a bit too grey. So there we are, they're nice aren't they? I, don't, I might not use that, I might use it minimally. And there's one with little sheep in. But I think it'd be much nicer with these big sheeps. Um, I've got teal doves as well. Anyway, there we are. Not lost anymore. I'll take those back in the house and uh, decide what to do. And I got some from Sheila of um, Fabric Treasures UK for Moda, Facebook. Um, that one's a bit squished there. This is Gradient Auras. Um, and I, I got these because I just love the colours. 
And when they arrived, I thought, gosh, they go really well with some others I've got. These ones, no, not that one. This one. Oh. They're not by the same people at all, but, but the colours go well. So that one is um, Whimsical Wonderland. I've got two of them. And this one is Gradients Auras. So I'm just trying to move the plastic so I can get to a corner and show you what lovely colours they are. I'm obviously in a lovely colour mood. Right. So. That's very pale. Let's get to some colours so you can actually see. That's the same. Wild and wacky, aren't they? But lovely, lovely colours. I don't mind oranges when they're like that. That's why I call a nice orange, because it's mixed with red. Aren't they lovely, these colours? You see, and then they go, go to the purples and blues dark colours anyway I've got that make a quilt with don't ask me what kind and i've got this evermore these she was selling these in the sales that she had so of course i can't resist anything in the sale i've got some more stuff coming up here tomorrow and i've got more stuff ordered well, i'm covered in covered in pre-cut fluff now Oof. Here we are. Can we actually see? That's a lovely white on white, isn't it? It's all very flowery and old fashioned. I don't know what I'm going to do with this either, but well, I do. I'm going to make a quilt because that's all I ever do. We're overrun with quilts. But I do plan, you see. I, I, know, I know I keep thinking about when I die. Hopefully by planning for when I die, that means I won't die. You know, like if you go out without your umbrella, it means it rains. If you take your umbrella, it won't. Well, this is my umbrella. I want to be able to make, or when I die, I hope to have made enough quilts for everybody to have one. Not everybody in the world, obviously, although, you know, I might be close on that. But, you know, all my family and my friends, my nieces and nephews, my great nieces, my grandchildren, well, they've already got hundreds, my friends, people who outlive me. That's what I want to do is have enough made although you know I don't suppose it matters if I don't I'm sure there's plenty of people who don't want one of my quilts oh. or plenty of people that could do without so I'm thinking of making this quilt that's going to be something I want to make oh I found my crochet pattern as well found it inside one of my notebooks. I'm going to make this one, I think. But I've not decided what fabric. This is, um... now this, I've got, I've got this fabric range. So I might make that out of that fabric range. And I've got this just because I thought, oh, that's, um... yeah, we've got the computer mended. 
and printed off my patterns. They're like flowers. But this one is um, by um, Missouri Star Quilt Company. It's lovely, isn't it? And the, the actual block that you make isn't a star at all. Let's see if I can find it. That there, that one, is the block you make. And then you sew them together into a block of four. And that's what it makes. And you just sew them all together and it just makes stars all over. And I thought, woo. I don't know what fabric I'm going to do it in though. Uh, these are my knitting patterns. Knitting patterns for frogs that have not started. Knitting patterns for, um, I don't know what it's called. Oh, a sky moo. Which is something my grandson likes. And the knitting patterns for bluey. Although my daughter says she's restricting my grandson's watching of bluey. Creature on my roof, did you hear it? Uh, because I, she was watching something and, and she thought, oh, I don't like what they're showing here. And um, so she's, she doesn't know whether or not to continue letting watching that. I can't remember what she said it was. Anyway, we went down to see her, didn't we, last week? And, oh, the week before even. Shortly after my last video, anyway, we went down. He, uh, <laughs> my husband couldn't find the, um, the sat nav or the camera for the dash cam for the car so we went down there relying on our memories which is a bit you know scary and um, there was lots of near misses with cars trying to get us but nothing worth filming so that was all right and we didn't get lost there were no diversions we weren't made to go a strange way so it was all very successful but we're not going midweek again. We went on the Wednesday because that was the day they were going to present him with his 40 year service award. So he wasn't going into work. So we went on that Wednesday. We've never gone midweek before. We've always gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, something like that. Oh, I've never seen so many lorries. There was just lorries, 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 lorries everywhere. You couldn't see any of the road signs for the lorries. The lorries were all trying to get up the hills and then there was the cars all all the people that drive on the motorways during the week you know i don't know reps are they i don't know what they're doing vans it was just completely chock-a-block with lorries cars and vans um it was it was pretty stressful but the weather was good you know we didn't have to worry about the weather we left at half six in the morning we stopped at stafford where we always do for um we had um pan o raisin and i had a pot of tea and he had a coffee i've given up coffee um and um and we carried on and we got there about half 12 left at half six got there about half 12 12 o'clock something like that so i spent the day with my daughter and my little grandson um her husband came home at four we had uh, we had a pie that we took up for our tea which was lovely um a local pie Baker is a he's just set up his own business um baking and selling these pies and I won one <laughs> in in the first three weeks before he launched um the people who shared uh, his information um went into a draw and there was 20 winners he gave away 20 pies um and we won one so we took it down there and ate it with um, us two and her husband, because she's vegetarian, it was ham and chicken and leek. Oh, it was lovely. Anyway, um, so of course when we came back I put a put a feedback about how delicious it was and everything, as did all the other 20 people. And um, invited people that I've been talking to, to his site to see it. And uh, and he's, he's in the three or four weeks, he's gone for like 50 um, subscribers to or members of his group because I think it's a Facebook group um, to a thousand so but he's only delivering locally just in my postcode area so um, I'm not going to tell you anything about it because he doesn't want orders from <laughs> anywhere else so uh, when he becomes a, um, 
you know, big. I'll let you know then. So, um, it, he started on Monday, 1st of July, it went public, or available to the public to buy, um, instead of just winning. And we're having ours delivered tomorrow. No, we're not. We're having it delivered next Tuesday. Um, I've ordered cheese and onion. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, that won't have any additives in it, will it? I tell you, it's opened my eyes deciding to to not have processed food. I spend all my time reading labels and then telling people about the labels. Even table salt, you know, <laughs> some awful things happen to that. I've got Himalayan salt now and I've got some Celtic salt on order and we don't even eat salt. But those salts are full of minerals so you don't have to take supplements. Anyway, yeah, I'm, a bit, I'm going on. I'm a bit of a lecturer now about um, unprocessed food. Tell everybody. Not that they want to know, but you know, you can't shut me up really. So, um, yeah, and then we went, oh my God. I told you, I told you didn't I, that, that um, the town we were going was a summer solstice. It was a summer solstice on the Thursday. We went down on the, on the Wednesday because she lives about two miles from Stonehenge. And she's always told me, we've never gone at this time of year. We usually go beginning of June. And she's always told me about how the streets are chock-a-blocker with people who come to Stonehenge to do the summer solstice and everything. And um, we've been to see it. We went to see it before she was married and moved down there. So she's been married six and a half years now, six years. It was probably 10 years ago. We, um, we were holidaying in Dorset. And after our holiday, we decided, well, I always like to do something with the travel because I don't like him to travel all the way to Dorset, being as I don't drive, um, without a break because it's quite a while and quite a distance and he, he has bad hips. They went necrotic when he had his treatment for his brain condition 16 years ago. I had one replaced and one uh, not replaced yet. They replaced the most painful one and his replacement is quite painful now as well so we always break when we go all the way down to the far end of the country we always break halfway and coming back this particular year um it wasn't long after my mum died and you know from a she started being poorly maybe february march and uh, she died in the october and we you know it was it all happened very quickly really it was we weren't expecting that to happen even though it took six months or so it seemed very quick you know there was there was always always the treatment to get her better get her better um it was all to do with the gallbladder and um they they solved the problem with the gallbladder but she didn't get better so they did some different scans and discovered she had cancer of um, the tubes that carry the bile and that had grown into the uh, the liver and she died three weeks later so you know that was quite quick apparently the cancer doesn't show up on all the other things that she'd had and they thought right we'll try that other scan and see if anything shows up and it did so you know they said it was um, they couldn't do anything about it they couldn't operate they couldn't replace anything because those tubes are unreplaceable and it was all in her liver and very quickly she went downhill she died three weeks later so i decided i was going to do things i wanted to do before i died which is probably why i've got dying on my mind so coming back from dorset we stopped at longleat safari park um well we stopped in a hotel and went to longleat the next morning because we had to be there at quarter past eight and um i went to feed the giraffes um and my husband didn't want to and I says to him well who am I going to talk to about it because when I come out I'll be saying oh this happened and that happened and you'll just be going oh whereas you know when you do it with someone you can talk to them about it so he did it as well um although I did think that he was going to give his feeding material to me so I could have double go at feeding the giraffes but he didn't he fed them himself anyway um so we went to Longley on the way back from um, Dorset and fed the giraffes. Had a lovely day. Um, 
and we stayed in the same hotel that night. And so we still had quite a journey um, to get home the next day. So um, I'd been seeing signs for, for um, Stonehenge. So I looked online that night in the hotel and we booked to go to Stonehenge the next morning and we got really early appointments about half past eight. So we got up in the morning, had our breakfast, everything was packed in the car and off we went to Stonehenge. Um, and it was virtually empty. There might have been 10 people there. There was people in the car park. We got there right at the crack of dawn. And, um, and we got the little coach down to the site because it's about half a mile. The, the buildings are about half a mile away from the actual henge. And um, we looked around the shops and had a bit of coffee. And then we went on the little coach down to see the henge. And as we were walking around, we had our handheld talking things that told you all you needed to know. And it got fuller and fuller. And um, we perhaps spent an hour, an hour and a half walking round. And then we went to the place where you wait to get the little coach back. I mean, plenty of people were walking, but I can't walk. That, I couldn't walk that far then. That was 10 years ago. So um, we were talking to the lady who, who was running the coach stop thing. And we were saying, um, she was telling us about when all the people come for the summer solstice um, the they have to hire all the like, hundreds of toilets for them all and um, and the next morning uh, locals volunteer to come and pick up all the rubbish they leave behind and then you know just without any kind of knowing about it my daughter got married and moved down to Wiltshire near Stonehenge so she's told us over the years about all the people and all the road blockages and the, the police have to uh, shut roads down so that they have uh, access to places should there be a need for an ambulance or a fire engine or the police. And all the other roads are full of Stonehenge people wanting to go down there. So um, anyway, we went down on the Wednesday and on the Wednesday night we went to our hotel and my husband dropped me off at the front and he went to park the car and come back with the bags. So you know how they have like a, a foyer that's, well, in this hotel, you don't walk straight into the hotel. There's like a foyer with information and um, where you can shake off the rain or whatever. And there was uh, there was a few people in there, maybe five. And I thought, oh. I said, are you, are you in a queue? They said, no, no, we're just out of the way of everybody. Okay, I said, so I went through into the actual um, reception area and that was full of maybe 30 people all with their bags and things. So I said to a person, oh, are you in a queue? <laughs> they said, no, no. So I shuffled, excuse me, excuse me, a bit further front. And I said to a man, are you in a queue? He said, no, we're with the group. So I thought, right. And I could see at the reception desk, um, this man talking to a woman and she had this big load of you know dorky card things and I thought right he must be the group leader so I went up to the desk and the lady behind the desk she says to me are you with the group I said no she said right come quick to the end so <laughs> she um she booked me in and she said go and get in the lift quick because they're going to take up all the lifts you'll be stood around for ages okay I said so I turned around my husband was stood uh, in the little in the little area with the five people in when you first come and he was stood there with all the bags with this look on his face <laughs> so I said, Quick, to the left so we went to the left we're only on the first floor and um and we got sorted uh before they started using all the lifts I thought, god no wonder they were full the hotel there was about 30 people i've no idea what country they came from um they weren't english I'm lucky I understood that well, I was only asking them simple questions, wasn't I? Anyway, um, the next morning at breakfast, it was chocker, chocker blocker. Yeah. In fact, when I went for my, my husband, he doesn't eat as much as me. Um, in the morning, well, any time really. He has less of an appetite. But, you know, the drugs he takes for his um, diabetes are appetite suppressants in fact my knee um, consultant has told me i should be taking them to suppress my appetite and lose some weight so i don't I, I, i've spent the past 15 years or so probably more than that controlling my diabetes through diet i don't want to go on to tablets 
anyway um so he went off and got um we do it in turns so i don't have to take my handbag with me so he goes first he comes back i go and get my cooked breakfast i come back he went and got um, a coffee and croissant so i went and got my tea and croissant and um i got the last croissant <laughs> And I went back and I said to my husband, this is the last one. I said, all that's left is uh, like an almond Danish. So he ran off and got that. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so I can only presume all of those people who were there, because, you know, it's perhaps 10 minutes drive on to, to Stonehenge from that hotel, um, were there to see the, um, the summer solstice. So we... Um, we left and went to my daughter's. Astounded really at all the road blockages and the policemen everywhere telling people where to go and all the areas that were blocked off that you weren't allowed to go down. It didn't seem, it didn't bother us at all. It didn't alter our, our little journey. Um, but it hadn't been like that the day before. Anyway, got to my daughter, spent the day there. Um, had fun playing with my little grandson. Had a nice chat with my daughter. Um, and we had fish and chips for tea. And um, because, you know, that's minimally processed, it's made on the spot in the chip shop. Um, went back to the hotel. Um, and by the next morning, it was empty. We went down for breakfast and there was maybe three tables with people at them. And doors. Loads of food, didn't run out of anything. Thought, well... Anyway, my daughter sent us a text saying the road is full of hippie vehicles. Um, no one, there's nowhere to park. So we were a bit worried about where we were going to park. Although I was, I thought, well, if her husband goes to work, there'll be his space. I don't think there's going to be any new um, summer stalls, these people. Anyway, when we got there, most of them had gone. But, my, you know, my daughter was there with the plastic bag picking up bits of rubbish that they dropped on the floor. I don't know why people who travel places can't pick up rubbish. I don't understand. My pockets were bins for my daughters. If ever they had anything and they'd finished with it, they got stuffed in my pockets. And then when I got home, I put them in the bin. Apparently I'm... Well, I am a different breed to these people that go to these things because um, I don't really want to go to crowded places where there's hired toilet things. Anyway, I mean, I've never been to, uh, you know, what do they call them, festivals? No, I'm not into noise either. I've never, never have been really. Anyway, um, we went to my daughter's and um, spent another couple of hours with her. My grandson cried when I went. No, he said. It's just nice to know that he knows who I am. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't see him very often at all. Anyway, um, yeah, we had a nice time, but driving home was awful. My husband was in the right mood. I don't know why, but he was in a right mood. There was a lot of traffic, um, even in the country. We were crawling along. There was like a mile of traffic coming up to a bend and then another mile of held up traffic coming up to roadworks. And he was in a right grumpy mood. And when we got to the services we always stop at, we just bought sandwiches and drinks and ate them in the car and then went off again. And it took us six hours to go home. So it was nice to get home. But, you know, I do miss them. Anyway, um, I had terribly swollen ankles from, from sitting still in the car because, you know, you can't really move your legs in the car, can you? for what, six hours going there. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, six hours. And then on the Wednesday and then on the Friday, sitting still for another six hours, my ankles were very swollen. And um, I stood up to go to bed on the Friday night when we got home and I could not move. The pain behind my good knee. Uh, I had to use crutches, crutches left over from when my husband had his, um, his hip replaced. I had to use crutches just to get to the stairs and then I had to go up the stairs on my hands and feet. I know people normally do things on their hands and knees but I can't put my knees on the ground that's too painful. So I, 
it was changing the the weight distribution you know the weight was more over my hands than my legs anyway i managed to get up the stairs but um yeah i was taking painkillers I, I didn't go out until perhaps um i don't know the weekend after because uh, i was frightened of being in pain while i was out and i didn't want to take my crutches at that point because I didn't think I needed them. But what if something had gone wrong? I would have needed them. But if I didn't need them, I would have just been carrying them everywhere, wouldn't I, like a stupid person? And if I didn't take them, I didn't want to suddenly be in pain because I wasn't resting. And, you know, everyone looking at me. It was enormously painful. Anyway, the more I rested, the more the swelling went down, the better it got. I think it was a trapped nerve. It was a bit sciatica, but behind my knee. Anyway, it's not come back. I've been fine. My ankles haven't swollen any more than normal. Although I do think I'm going to talk to the doctor about changing my um, blood pressure tablets. Because it says on them, the new ones. That she, well, she didn't give me new ones. She increased the ones I was taking. It said that one of the side effects could be swollen ankles. And I don't want that happening again. Anyway, that was a very nice time seeing her. Even if the travelling wasn't so good. Um, and it was lovely weather down there. I mean, we've had a few days of sun and it's quite pleasant today. Although, I don't, the sky isn't really blue. It's still cloud, you know. We didn't see any of the uh, northern lights because it was cloud. We don't see anything, it just rains here. So, it's been really miserable, but doing, being down at her end of the country was lovely. Yeah it was lovely weather and lovely people um yeah so we came back and i was laid up then for a week so i've been working on my um the quilt some of the time but the rest of the time i've been working on my um you know my round robin so i'm not going to show you because i don't want the people who've made it um to know in advance what i've been doing but i've been making these to put around the round robin um, so that's I'm going to do that before I start on this baby quilt and these are my corners so I've been doing that while my foot has been swollen up um, I didn't go to my quilting group because my foot was too swollen up and uh, it was a bit kind of out there on my own had something uh, occurred I didn't really want to be out there on my own um, so I didn't go and um, uh, then it was last weekend and we had the children they were very rowdy this weekend I think it's with um, you know it's coming to the end of term now I think probably in America you're already on holiday um, well the holidays don't start here until about the 21st 22nd of July so when I used to work in school this was the worst term for behaviour that all tired they're all just tired and they're all excited because the holidays are coming and yeah behavior goes a bit down the pan and they've had all their exams and everything and we try to make things fun but yeah behavior is uh, an issue at this time of year so it was also an issue at our house although um i know it was the weekend before he was sick i do get mixed up anyway that's what's been going on nothing much a bad a bad knee and a bad good knee that, that kind of made me stay on the settee a lot um bits of sewing nearly finished my quilt about to start the baby quilt and then something new i can't decide what i think i'm going to do my christmas quilt i've not decided on the pattern though but um i've also found out i was reading about you know my original christmas quilt has run because I bought cheap backing fabric and then when I washed it, everything became the same colour as the backing fabric. And I've washed it about four times and it's it's a bit lighter, but I've gone right off it. So um, I was reading online about somebody was asking, how do you get dye out? Now, I've, I have bought Retain, but it's not been nice enough weather yet to wash the quilt again and hang on the line to dry. So I've not used it yet, but somebody was saying you have to use some American washing liquid. I can't remember what it was called. I think it began with a D. Anyway, 
I looked online, what is the UK equivalent of American, whatever it was. And they said, oh, they're both made by the same manufacturers and it's called Ariel or Fairy in England. So apparently I just have to soak it in a fairy solution in the bath and the dye will come out and I can put it on the line. So um, still have to wait for a sunny day, but we don't use Ariel or Fairy, <laughs> which are, you know, the best apparently i'm allergic to one of them and i can't remember which one it is so we don't buy either of them so it's going to have to be a rubber glovey uh, job and uh, it's going to have to involve my husband because it it will be heavy when it's wet and i hope um it's not all green i hope the white and the red are actually white and red we'll see and um and if we have a few sunny days i'll um I might even try it with the retain. But, you know, we're very dependent on the weather. It's quite nice today. Here it's 24 degrees. I've got all my windows and doors open. I can hear the birds singing. Yeah, can you hear it? Um, there was a creature on the roof. It could have been uh, a squirrel or it could have been a bird. But it's not often a cat anymore, not since our cat's gone. Do you know, I was looking at uh, rescue, local rescue places. And I found two cats that were lovely, two boys, both 10 years old. So you've not got much longer left with them, but they were lovely. £460 to rescue them. £460. I thought, I wonder they've been there for ages. They want them to go together. I mean, people that go to rescue centres, do you think they have that sort of money? I think people with that sort of money buy from a breeder. <laughs> Oh, so I'm afraid I'm not going to rescue them too. Does that mean it's going to cost £230 just for one cat? It's ridiculous, isn't it? I can see baby pears on my pear tree. The apples are... Apple's quite big now, about that big. It's not bad. The pears aren't really pear-shaped yet. They're um, kind of an egg shape. Anyway, I bought an egg steamer as well and uh, I've used it once, which is more than I've used a pan because people say to me, why have you bought one of them when you, all you have to do to boil an egg is put it in a pan of water? Because so I've had a pan of water for 40 odd years and rarely use that method. Same when I'm making soup. I've had a pan soup for 40 odd years and I rarely use it. So I bought a soup maker and I make them. I wouldn't say I make soups all the time, maybe once a fortnight. Um, it's more often than I use the soup pan, which you know, isn't a specific pan, it's just a pan that I would choose to make soup in. Um, so now I've got an egg, it, it soft boils or hard boils or poaches, and I've hard boiled three eggs and it took no time at all and I had a lovely egg salad and a lovely egg sandwich on two days. So I'm going to boil another one when I get into the house and, um, well, steam boil. I shall have that with my salad because it's salad weather today. Um, I don't think anything else that interesting has happened. I've got a very bad shoulder. This shoulder's hurting me right at the back. Now, I think it's a draft from the from the curtains behind me in the living room. I sit on the tea that's near the window, and we have nice nice thick curtains um we have blinds as well but we don't put them on wall down because they don't work very well i put them there to keep the draft away from me um anyway i think it's creeping out somewhere or other and it's giving me a draft right on the back of that so but i can't reach it you know to rub anything on so i'm taking ibuprofen all the time i'm wearing a scarf in fact i've took my scarf off in here because uh, I was a bit hot but this is my scarf that I wear I did look I looked everywhere for my purple one to go with my top but I don't know where that is either I don't know where anything is really do I anyway I've bought lots I've got more coming and um, I've done lots of sewing and quilting I'm going to finish that off I'm going to sew this round robin together I'm going to make this baby quilt and get some more parcels tomorrow.
for me to put on a pile. I'm, never, I'm not really in the mood, you know, for tidying up. I never am, am I? Sometimes I am, sometimes I tidy up. But uh, I've got a sore shoulder. And you know when you come off your holidays or after Christmas and all the excitement has, has gone and you're back to normal. I feel a bit like that after seeing my daughter. But I'm surrounded by treasure. Maybe I should spend more time in here and enjoy the treasure a bit more. It's just not nice to come out when it's raining. Oh, I've bought a new lawnmower as well, so my husband's actually cut the grass now. But I, um, I shall get off and get some things done. And um, I look forward to talking to you again soon in a couple of weeks. And uh, I hope this leaves you well. Bye for now. Bye.